Hello and a very warm welcome to the first of our groups here at Crufts 2022. Now we're about to find out which dog will represent the working group in the prestigious Best in Show competition on Sunday. I'm joined here in the commentary box by international judge Frank Kane, who actually judged Best in Show here in 2012. It's good to be back, isn't it, Frank? It's very good to be back. And here's our judge, Robin Newhouse, judge of this group tonight. He's uh, been in dog since he was a schoolboy and bred over 40 champions in Samoids. There's the Alaskan Malamute coming in. So each of our best of breeds coming into the ring. First chance for the judge to have a look at them. There's the Bouvier. Our best of breed winning boxer. Always a cheer for the boxer, isn't there? <laughs> And now we have the Bull Mastiff. And here, a very handsome Bull Mastiff coming in. Our best of breed, Canadian Eskimo dog. One of the rarer breeds in the group. A very striking outfit there on the handler as well. <laughs> and now we have the Doberman best of breed winner. That's a smart outline of this Doberman. The imported register is the Enkelbuka Mountain Dog. So here we have our import register competitor, the Enkelbuka Mountain Dog. And now we have our best of breed German Pinscher. One of the Pinscher family, we saw the Doberman. This comes from the same family. Please welcome our best of breed giant Schnauzer. The largest of the Schnauzer breeds, the giant Schnauzer. And now we have our Great Dane Best of Breed winner. Majestic Great Dane striding in there. This followed by the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. So our judge just using this as an opportunity to have a first look at the dogs on the move, get himself into his stride. And our Best of Breed Greenland Dog. And even more rare, this uh, protected breed in Greenland, the only surviving native breed of Greenland. And only seven of them here this year. Now, please welcome our Hoverbart Best of Breed winner. Uh, who judged this one then, Frank? Oh, well, <laughs> modesty forbids, but I was very pleased with this one. And our Leonbergen Best of Breed winner. German breed. We now have our Mastiff Best of Breed winner. One of the oldest breeds here, the Mastiff, coming into the ring. And our Neapolitan Mastiff. And uh, the Italian breed, the Neapolitan Mastiff, the handler wearing part of his national dress in this, this uh, great occasion for him. The Newfoundland and coming from a big breed, entry. Smaller entry for the Portuguese water dog with that distinctive coat clip. Now we have the Rottweiler Best of Breed. Big cheers. Big cheers for the Rottweiler. The Russian Black Terrier. Our best of breed, St. Bernard. And here's the St. Bernard, the saints as they're known, yes. Rescue dog from the Alps, Swiss Alps. And our best of breed, Siberian Husky. Light and fast on the move, the Siberian Husky there. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, our Tibetan Mastiff Best of Breed winner. Very impressive. That mane of hair over its head now and shoulders. Now, breed winners are in the ring. I'd like to hand you over to Graham Hill and Tim Silitopil in the commentator's box to take you through the group. Thank you, Jenny. So our judge now well, will just take his time, walk down the line, and he's looking his knee frank for how each of these compares to their the breed standards, so the and ideal his dog. First yes, his first walk round the, the, the dog is to get in a sense of their balance. Is the it the right shape for the breed? Is it the right balance and outline? That's the first indication of good breed type. So he's looking at the outline, the leg length, the back line. Is that correct for the breed? They've all got their own standards. He'll be very conversant with all the breed standards and he will be measuring each one against its breed standard. But at this level of competition, it's also that je ne sais quoi, isn't it? That extra something that's well, going to be a winner. They need to go well and they need to have a bit of ring presence at the end, which just separates the difference between the great and the good. 
Has anything caught your eye yet? Oh, not yet. I'm not. I'm just getting my first look. Like the judge, like Robin here, full of concentration. Of course, the, the working group is made up of breed which were bred to help people in their daily lives. Sometimes even to survive through hunting, hunting for food, so guarding, or as a means of transport. All the best of breeds here in the working group. So our judge now will take a closer look at each of the best of breeds. Please take this opportunity to show your appreciation to all the working group best of breeds here at Crust 2022. Now here is the strongest of the northern sled dogs, the Alaskan Malamute. Takes his name from a tribe of Eskimos, the Malamutes, which developed the breed. Always a strong entry in this group. A strong sled dog, pulling heavy loads over great distances. With this dog, number seven from an entry of 114. So this one is a five-year-old dog competing today. Also won best of breed at Crufts in 2020, so uh, not its first time in the ring. Now our judge on the move is looking for the tail to be carried highly, like a waving plume, which we can see beautifully there as it comes and towards us. They're working dogs, they have to be fit for function, and this is a prime example. You know, it's densely coated to protect it against the extremes of climate. Even the inside of its ears is furred and at night they could curl up into a small ball and wrap the tail around it to give it some warmth. Striding out very well, powerful dog. And now Robin turns his attention to the Bernese Mountain Dogs. Judged today by Mrs Diane Atherton, there were 140 dogs here. And best of breed was this dog number one. Five, Here we have our best of breed Bernese Mountain Dog with that distinctive jet black coat with rich reddish patches and then patches of pure white. The dog takes its name from the Swiss region of Bern, where it was bred to pull carts, but it's also been used for herding. Our judge is looking for a strong, sturdy dog, and that distinctive colour is a really important breed feature. Which some say represents a cross on the Swiss And this flag. one's come from the Netherlands to win, so uh, a a a nice, nice way to start the year winning at Crufts. All of these Swiss breeds, the karting breeds, are this tricolour, this rich black, white and tan. They were bred to pull carts, they're sometimes known as the cheese factory dog, because that's how they started, pulling the cheeses to the station, or the milk churns. And often see them in national festivals, in ornamental carts. And this one actually seven and a half, so technically a veteran in dog years. awarded best of breed to this male number 279. And now Robin going over the Bouvier. Bouvier means cattle dog. And for centuries, this was a cart puller and a guard dog. In its ancestry, it may have some Schnauzer, some of the French breed, the Beauceron. It was also not only just a cattle dog, it was used in the world wars. Almost extinct after the two world wars, and a vet collected a sample of them from around the country to rejuvenate the breed and develop them again. So this one is a three-year-old dog that comes from Holland, so another overseas competitor. And our judge is looking for that harsh beard, which gives it the characteristic foreboding expression. It should be a strong, well-muscled dog. And as we can see here, it's powerful and really driving from the rear on the moon. And it has to have this really thick matte coat, you know, almost impossible to get into the skin. It's so a protective coat. Boxers originated in Germany during the 1850s. Here we have the ever-smiling face of the Boxer, descended from a German breed that was used to hunt bear, boar and deer in the 19th century. The breed was later crossed with bulldogs to lead to what we have in the ring today. Our judge is looking for a really clean outline, a glossy coat and the head is really important. It should be noble and you should really be able to see that expression in those large round eyes. With the first breed club formed the following year. And this dog is a very big winner. He's won 34 cc's. Now, it takes three cc's to become a champion. This one's won 34. Four times a best in show winner. So he's got some form, this dog. And will be um, one of the tips for this group, I would have thought. And only four years old, so that's quite a lot for that age. Hails from Oxford, so a UK competitor there. They're very loyal to their family and friends. Striding out nicely. Number three, one, six.
And now we see the Bull Mastiff. Mr. Albert Hope judged the excellent entry of the 105 Bull Mastiff. Now the striking outline and strong head of the Bull Mastiff. As its name suggests, the breed comes from a crossing of the Bulldog and the Mastiff. And it was originally the gamekeeper's night dog to, pretend, to protect country estates from poachers. In the early days, brindle was the favourite colour because it was camouflaged in the forest. could give the poachers a nasty shock when it came out. This one, a fawn, more popular the colour, strong, not only strong but also athletic, capable of jumping a five-barred gate. So this one is just two years old, a dog that comes from Denmark, where it's a top winner. Now, I love this. The owner describes him as confident, selfish, and a clown who's always up to something. It looks like he's behaving pretty well here, doesn't it, Frank? Yes. Uh, see how successful with it. they bring the top dogs from Europe here to compete. A lot of um, successful overseas exhibitors today. So we've seen some of the denser, longer coats, but this dog also has a really hard, weather-resistant coat. It's just a shorter variety. And make wonderful household companions, great characters. And from his entry of 28, he awarded best breed to this dog, number 512. Our next best of breed winner, the Canadian Eskimo dog. Now this is an ancient sled dog that was built for strength and stamina in harsh, harsh conditions. It almost became extinct, but was actually saved by a breeding program from the Canadian government. It was almost wiped out by the Siberian Husky, which we'll see later, which was quicker and faster. He's not built for speed necessarily, but rather for hard work. And it has remained a primitive... And this is a dog which has um, spitz characteristics. By that I mean it's got a wedge-shaped head, small pointed ears, furred inside to give it protection, and again that, that tail over the back which you could curl round at night and give it some warmth. And the dense hunt undercoat would also help protect it, wouldn't it, in the, in the cooler conditions. And this is a sled dog that is built for stamina rather than speed. When the Siberian Husky came along, that's what made it almost extinct. It couldn't match the speed of the Siberian. And next we see the Doberman. Doberman was judged today by Margaret Spindley from an overall free entry of 102 Doberman. Now the Doberman takes his name from the man who developed the breed, Louis Doberman, a tax collector. In the 19th century, he set about producing a dog that would protect him on his rounds of collecting taxes and perhaps to persuade the, his clients to pay up. Now we've got a very popular worldwide dog, striking in outline, square in its balance and very versatile. So we're looking for a squarely built dog with a really clean outline and that distinctive wedge-shaped head. They should look on the move as this one does, like it's capable of great speed. Now this one caught my eye in the collecting ring earlier, Frank. What do you think? Well, it looks very smart and interestingly, usually we see black and, the black and tan Doberman. Here we've got a brown and tan, or as they call it, a rust and tan. The colour also popular. Beautiful looking dog, this clean, masculine head, good bone and holding a very good top line. A sign of good balance, that hard, firm top line held on the move. Once known as the French Mastiff, here we have the Dog de Bordeaux. It dates back as far as the 14th century when it was used as a guard dog. It should be powerful and balanced. Actually, we've, we've skipped. I think we haven't got our Dog de Bordeaux and present. This, and, so. <laughs> and, and this is the Entelbusha Mountain Dog we're looking at, which has come from the import, the import register today. The import register for breeds which are just developing a population in the United Kingdom. So here, yeah, one of the Swiss breeds again, tricolour coat, dense coated and short coated, unlike its relation, the Bernese Mountain Dog, which we saw earlier. Named after the Swiss Valley where it originates from, where it was used to bring cows down from the mountains. So this is our import register representative, the Entlebusha Mountain Dog. Hazel Leggett was the breed judge today for German Pitcher, and from a breed entry of 31, Hazel selected this bitch, number 721, as her best of breed. 
Here we have our best of breed German Pinscher, an ancestor of both the Doberman and the miniature Pinscher. The name literally means to bite or to grip, which would have helped in its job as a vermin killer. Our judge will be looking for an elegant, flowing outline, but also well muscled. This is a dog that can really work. Now, I'm always surprised that the Pincher is not more popular because it's a handy sized dog, very little grooming, it's easy to keep fit, and they're very, very smart, intelligent, and great companions. This one is a three year old bitch from France, and she is a multi international champion, so has won everywhere from France, Slovenia, Netherlands, Luxembourg. We saw the Doberman early, you can see some of the same characteristics the square build, the wedge shaped tapering muzzle there and the, the high set tail and it should have a strong top line. There are German Pincher. Great win for it coming from France today. And from an entry of 56, she chose this dog number 770 as her best of breed. This is the largest of the three Schnauzer breeds. Now here is the giant Schnauzer, the tallest of the Schnauzer family. And the word Schnauzer means whiskered snout. And we see it ideally there, this beard on its muzzle. Strongly built. It was a German breed and developed in southern Germany, near Munich, and first exhibited as a Russian bear Schnauzer, but developed by the crossing of a Schnauzer with the Great Dane and the Rottweiler. Here we have another one showing the longevity of some of these breeds. This dog is over seven years old, which means that technically they're a veteran. Uh, Hales from Yorkshire and is a champion that's described as an absolute showman, which I think we can see here powering around the ring. It's proved its versatility and not only was it a droving dog driving cattle and sheep to market, but also was used in, as a carting dog and in the world wars was used uh, in, in the trenches as a messenger dog and as a pack dog, so highly versatile. This is the black variety, but they are also in salt and pepper. Here we have our best of breed Great Dane, that imposing outline with beautiful muscular strength. They're descended from heavier dogs which were once used for hunting in Germany and their nobility led them to be described rather lovely as the Apollo of dogs. We're looking for that elegant outline and it needs to have grace but the head is really important. It should be long with a strong jaw and a dark eye. We can see that there beautifully. Now, the Great Dane, the, the name's misleading. It's not really a Danish dog, it's the German it's one. German. Yes. And it was bred as a, as a boar hunter. So it, 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 some people say it should still be in the, the hound group. But here we have, the Great Dane should have a look of dash and daring about it in its carriage, ready to go anywhere. It's got both substance and a degree of elegance to it. This one, just three-year-old bitch, moving out really nicely. For such a large dog, you can see they're light on its feet. They were judged today by Mr. Keith Baldwin, and from an entry of 18, he chose this dog 947 to be best of breed and represent the breed this evening in the group. And there is the short-haired variation of the Bernese. This is the great Swiss mountain dog, another of the four Swiss tricolour breeds. Same purpose as the Bernese, as a carting dog taking the milk churns and cheeses to market. Later in the 19th century, when motor transportation made him redundant, it was, favored, it was the favoured breed for household companions. At festival days in Switzerland, you can often see the dogs with ornamental carts and their handlers in national dress. A wonderful spectac spectacle to see them going through the streets. So this one is a dog and he's just 15 months old and he's here today from Poland. He's already a uh, Czech junior champion and uh, apparently he's very friendly, loves travelling, which is a good job. Looking beautiful in the ring here. You should be able to see good reach and drive, which we can see there, those front legs really reaching forward and the drive coming from the rear. Here we have the only surviving native breed of Greenland, the Greenland dog. It was used to haul sleds. It's midway in size between the Alaskan Malamute, which we saw earlier, and the Siberian Husky, which we will see later on. It should have a powerful body and a really heavy coat to help it with those awful Arctic conditions. 
the ancestry of the breed, and possibly... And it bears a striking similarity to the Canadian Eskimo dog, which we saw earlier. They're allowed in any, any colour. Here we've got this particoloured dog, but again, it's the texture of the coat and the double coat which gives it protection against the cold. And this is another with those spitz characteristics we talk about, isn't it, Frank? So yeah. the, the, the wedge muzzle, the pointed ears, and the, the tail bushy curled up over the back. And protected by the government because they've put a ban on the importation of dogs. So there's no genetic dilution. They're so rare, still a rare breed. Frank Cain was a designated breed judge for this breed. And from his entry of 40, he found his best of breed in this pitch number 980. And I've had the pleasure of judging the Hoverwarts today, this German breed, a general farm dog. The word Hof means farm and Wart to guard, so it is the guard dog of the farms in Germany, the guardian of the homestead. Here we have this black and gold dog, uh, very workmanlike, everything is unexaggerated and balanced. So this one is a four-year-old bitch over from Ireland, but she's also been a junior winner, has competed in Amsterdam, and has had reserve best bitch here before. And in the 1920s, this was almost extinct as a breed, and it was necessary for Kurt Koenig, a German breeder, went around gathering dogs from the valleys of Germany to build the breed up again. So it's a story of survival. We should see effortless ground-covering movement, which we are here beautifully. This male of 1019 from an entry of 106 Leon Burgers here at Crust today. The distinctive lion like appearance of the Leon Burger, named after the town in southwest Germany where the breed was originated, and it's believed to include St. Bernard's, Newfoundlands, and Pyrenean mountain dogs in its bloodline. Bred as a guard dog, one of its most distinctive features is its coat, which has this black mask. It should be strong and muscular, but still with elegance. According to legend, the Leon Burger was primarily bred as a symbol. And we can see the Leonberg, the outline of the Leonberg, on the coat of arms and flag of the town in southwestern Germany, developed in the 19th century by one of the mayors who wanted to breed a lion like dog. And here we have the colour is almost gold, red, or fawn, sometimes with a black overlay and black mask. The Leonberg, a lion like. It should be strong but also athletic, light on its feet for its size. This one is a three-year-old dog hailing from East Sussex and apparently the world revolves around him, according to his owner, which is how it should be. And now we see the Mastiff. They were judged today by Tom Johnston and from an entry of 35, best of breed was awarded to this dog, number one. And our judge going over the Mastiff it used to be known as the Old English Mastiff and it goes back at least to the Roman invasion of England. Roman soldiers admired the dogs, matched them against their own mastiffs, and of course the English mastiff came out top. Um, often they used to, they were used later on as dogs working on the country estates to ward off poachers. We're looking here for type and substance combined with really sound movement. Yes, this is a big, heavy dog, but it should be able to cover the ground, as we can see here. This one is a four and a half year old dog from South Wales. And also won best of breed here at Crufts in 2020, so another one back And a big winner. Well, his great asset is that he's large, but he's also very sound, it means he's sound on the move very balanced movement. They're a heavier breed than the bull mastiff, which we saw earlier, and a bit, little bit longer in the body and heavier in the muzzle. Here we have a breed that's instantly recognisable to any Harry Potter fans. It is, of course, the Neapolitan Mastiff. Now, these dogs are said to have led Roman armies into battle, wearing spiked collars, and you can imagine that would have been a foreboding presence ahead of you. They have um, forebearers that stretch back to ancient civilization when they were used as fighting dogs. Obviously, today, they are not used as fighting dogs, but we should still have the characteristics, so well-boned, large, Large, muscular and strongly built with a really deep square muzzle.
It's thought that this dog is based on the Tibetan Mastiff, the oldest of all the Mastiff breeds. But what I would say is that the, breed of, the breeders have done marvellous work in getting rid of exaggerations in the breed. The early ones in the country were perhaps over-wrinkled, too much skin, which had impact on skin problems and it with their eyes. Now they are much sounder and much less exaggerated, so credit to the breeders. Some loose skin would have been a, an asset when dogs were fighting to stop them becoming injured, but obviously too much became a problem, so it's being bred out now. Absolutely. And he found his best of breed in this dog, number one, two, three, four. Now the beautiful head of the Newfoundland. There were 129 of them here today for specialist John Evans. The breed comes from northwest Canada. He was the ultimate working dog, a water rescue dog. He also used to help the fishermen bringing in the nets and bringing in the boats. This one is a five-year-old dog over from France and another that also won best of breed here in 2020. Now some of the characteristics that would have helped this breed when it was in water include its oily waterproof coat and it actually has webbed feet to help it to swim. He also has big barrel ribs to give him flotation and stamina in the water. He used to spend hours in icy waters. He had to be fit to survive. Very nice shape and going nicely. Big bone, solid. You can see he's full of breed type in balance, outline and movement. Next to be seen is the Portuguese water dog. A fairly recent newcomer to the United Kingdom. The Portuguese water dog originates from the Algarve region of Portugal. It's known as the Chala Agua. Another versatile water dog here, we have the Portuguese water dog, hailing from the Algarve region. So these dogs were used to drive shoals of fish into nets, but also acted as a messenger going between boats. The traditional lion-like trim that you see here is for a reason. It aids propulsion from the rear legs in the water, and the small plume helps to protect the end of the tail. And, used and this is this is quite a young bitch today, becoming a champion today, and she's a, a daughter of the breed record holder, so she's carrying on the family tradition of being a top winner. Only uh, almost three years old, really taking this in a stride, isn't she? Judge should be looking here for the, the profuse coat that we talked about, but also the really well-proportioned head, short neck. It should be carried high, as we can see here on yes, the move. Yes, as you say, it's not just a fancy trim. It's a, a protective, functional trim. The head should be strong. It should have substance under the coat. And lovely, wise expression. Was this dog bitch, number 1400? Out of the 124 Rottweilers here today, this is our winner. The breed was developed in the town of Rottweil in Germany and like many breeds started off as a local dog, then spread throughout the country and became international. It's thought that the original stock came from the Roman army, expanding their empire and driving their cattle with dogs like this around Europe and it left some of its base stock in the town of Rottweil, where the breed was developed to what we see today. So this one, a three-year-old bitch, actually winning her first CC today, so a fantastic achievement for them to get through to the group ring. Our judge is looking for strength and endurance combined with manoeuvrability in this dog. As we said, developed in Germany, they were drovers dogs, but they also were guard dogs in one. So characteristics of both of those should be seen in the breed. And of course, the breed sometimes gets a bad press. They're a wonderful breed, but they need a job of work and they need sensible owners. Wonderful breed in the house, great guard dogs, but need sensible owners. So here we have a relatively new breed, the Russian Black Terrier, developed by the Russian Army after the Second World War as a guard and general service dog. They were first shown in Moscow back in 1955. It's believed that the giant Schnauzer was central to its breeding, but there's also elements of Rottweiler and even Airedale Terrier in there. It's large and imposing with a robust frame. And this is a relatively modern breed, as you say, coming at first show in 1955, bred by the Russian breeding station. They wanted a strong working dog to round up fugitives and round up prisoners. This one is four and a half year old bitch, and she's over from Germany today. 
and huge bone and substance under the coat, which is a protective coat, and a strong head, thick lips and strong muzzle. And now we see the bird, judged today by Jane Brennan. She awarded best of breed. Now here is our St. Bernard, 58 of them here today. The breed takes its name from the monks in St. Bernard of Menthon who set up a hostel for travellers in, in the Swiss Alps as far back as the 10th century. It's thought that the breed was developed from mastiffs, mastiff types and also with a, an input of Great Dane blood. These dogs needed to work in conditions of up to 8,000 feet of altitude in up to 40 foot of snow. So they really are built to withstand all conditions. This one is just 18 months old. I think she's looking really well today, don't you, Frank? It is, I, this is a beautiful mover, absolutely beautiful. It's light on its feet. It's got good leg length, very good coat. I like this very much indeed. And as you say, young, not yet fully mature, but full of quality. This has taken my eye here. I think she's one to watch. Now, wouldn't you be glad to see something like this coming to rescue you if you were stuck in a, a, a drift? Preferably with a little with barrel brandy, of brandy, yeah. brandy around its neck, <laughs> yes. But that's a bit of romantic folklore, yeah, I think. It's yes. not true, is it? Husky, which is a beautiful dog breed with a thick coat that comes in a multitude of colours and markings. Mr. Jack Paulswell judged the breed today. Here we have our penultimate best of breed winner, the Siberian Husky, with its foxy appearance. Now this is the lightest and fastest of the sled dogs that we'll see, and hails from northeast Siberia. They've reigned supreme in many world sled races since the early 20th century, and it's easy to see why once you see them on the move. They are quick and light on their feet, but don't let that fool you. These are hardy dogs that are bred to stay out in all conditions, thanks to that lovely double coat. We can see by just looking at it that it is the lightest of the sled dogs, which gives it this speed. But again, protective coat, there's furred ears, it's got good leg length, they're higher on the leg, not so deep in the body, so it's got this athleticism about it. And this one, five and a half year old dog, loves to show but does also work in a harness, which is wonderful to see. It's great when we see uh, show dogs that are also fulfilling their purpose, isn't it, Frank? Yeah. Uh, the Chuchuk. The Chukchi Eskimos who developed the breed, that's a mouthful, isn't it? I'm glad you said that. They, they were so selective that they, they castrated the males, which were not up to standard, to keep the breed of high quality. Oh, gosh. And best of breed was this dog number 1653. This is one of the largest of the Tibet breeds and is regarded by some as one of the world's... Now, here is the imposing head and expression of the Tibetan Mastiff. 34 of them here today. This is said to be the father of all the Mastiff breeds and perhaps one of the world's most ancient breeds. Bred in the Himalayas to guard farms and property in extreme climate. Often tethered at the entrance to farms and often used to wear a red collar made from yak hair the tradition of the breed. Look at that, for imposing outline, substance, and remarkably light on its feet. This one just two years old, hailing from France, and again, another big winner in Europe, multi-best in show winner, described by his owner as friendly. We love to take care of him, and he loves being groomed. And he also likes it when people say you're beautiful, which I'm sure there will be after this. And brought to Europe by the early travellers to the Himalayas who saw him, were impressed by him, and brought some of them home. So, Robin, you have, having concluded the preliminary examinations of all the working best of breeds here in the group ring. So, we've seen all of our best of breed winners in the working group. Who is going to make the judges shortlist? Well, the judge is looking round. This is where he's reminding himself of what he found on hands-on examination. We can all judge from the ringside and from the commentary box, but he's had the privilege of going over them, feeling their anatomy, feeling their condition, and seeing how they measured up against their breed standard. Now, Robin will come out and make perhaps a short list of eight dogs to come forward. Now he's walking down. Oh, he's, he's going to move them again yes, from he's there. Have a, yes, he's brought him out. Oh, yes. no, he's bringing he's him out. So Alaska Malamute is our followed first. By followed by the Beniz Mountain Dog. 
And who's coming out and next? Like the it's boxer. the boxer, the famous boxer, Argento. There's that smart Doberman I love that you like, Doberman. Laura. Go on. Yeah. Out she comes. Yes, there he goes. <laughs> Again, looking at heads and expressions as he comes down the line. Is he going to have your hover vart out? Well, one of the rarer breeds, of course. Here's the Leon Burger. There, out they sound moving. Oh, I told you that it was a great mover. The you did. Oh, the Mastiff. And there's the very oh, smart Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Looking at the Rottweiler now, That's and burn, then that lovely surely. Saint Bernard. Oh, it is the yeah. Saint Bernard comes out, and the Siberian, Siberian Husky. Husky. And there we have our eight finalists for the working group here. Now we probably will see them moving again, just to check on the movement before he makes his decision. A round of applause there for all of the other best of breed winners. It really is an achievement to get through to the group judging. So our judge now going to take a closer look at each breed. He will have, won't he, Frank, an idea now if he's four, but maybe not the order. No, he'll be exactly yes, and he will be just checking on the movement. And as he as he sends them away from him, he's looking for the drive, the rear drive that they're using their hocks well to propel them forward, and they're coming back straight. No loose elbows, straight vertical columns in their front legs. So this is Black, a five-year-old dog, over from Italy. Um, also won best of breed here at Crufts 2020. And that's a perfect Alaskan Malamute tail. It's like a waving plume over its back. That one's striding out beautifully and there. And in very good coat by the looks of it from here. So next, the Beniz Mountain Dog. This one is uh, the veteran, That's seven and a half years six. old. A big winner, a world winner, um, won all over Europe. And here from the Netherlands today. And hugely popular. Packed ringside, watching them being judged. You know, if you own a, a, <laughs> if you own a Bernese Mountain Dog, A, you, you're guaranteed devotion, oh companionship, God. and a lot of hair about the house, I have to say, as well. And yes. sometimes some slobber. <laughs> Lovely top line, strong, level top line as it moves. So Frank, this boxer caught your eye, didn't he? Four-year-old dog. Yes, he's a big, Oxford. he's a big winning dog. He's uh, had sort of three years at the top now. Thirty-four challenge certificates and four best in show wins at the general champ shows that are held throughout the year before Crufts. So going into it, he might have been one of the favourites in this group, and here he's made the last eight. Whether he'll win it, we'll have to wait and see. He's also proving a very good sire. Lots of his children are winning well. They're described as ever smiling, aren't they, the boxer? And you can see why there. Great characters. Now, this is the one that's caught my eye, I've got to say. Um, the Doberman. Six-year-old from Derbyshire. Uh, nine cc's to its name. And described as a dream to live with. Amazing, sweet and lovable. And, of course, many of the breeds here are coated, so the judge has to get under the coat to feel the anatomy. Here, what you see is what you get. There's nothing to hide, yes. is there? And again, very nice, very handsome dog. These working dogs really come into their own, don't they, in the arena with the space to move them. And now off goes the Mastic best of breed. So this one, a three-year-old dog from Sussex has won 11 cc's and one of the top winners in the breed in, in the last two years yes it's all about bertie what a nice name yes all about bertie just getting a little bit tired now it's a long day i think we forget don't we these dogs are here from from 9 a.m most of them there's our mastiff and here's a very striking outline in the newfoundland in perfect condition a beautiful shape Lovely proportion, strong bone. It's a real gentle giant, isn't it, this breed? You can see there the, the proportion of the handler to the dog there. She can manage this dog. He's, he's not taking her anywhere. They're lovely temperament. And remarkably light on his feet for the size and substance of the dog. 
another one that took the, the ticket and best of breed across 2020, so hoping to go one better today. Now we're just 18 months old. I think the St Bernard is our, our pick for the future. Well, well I think it's uh, very nice. It's really taken my eye. What I love about it, if it's leg length, it's proportions and strong top line. As you say, it's young, but it looks beautiful from here. Moving so well as well. Just a great example of a, a, a sturdy, heavy dog, but moving light on its feet and really driving around the ring. And on, on a loose lead, look, it's trotting alongside the handler the on a loose lead. That's wonderful teamwork with handler and dog. A devoted looking up at, uh, look, looking up at the boss, marvelous. And the final of our shortlist, the Siberian Husky. We're looking for a dog that's quick and light on its feet. And this one's doing that beautifully. This is a five and a half year old dog from Nottinghamshire. Has won one best in show before at a championship show. And going very typically, light on its feet, holding its top line, long striding. So he's got a very good shortlist here of eight Top quality dogs. Where's he going to go for the places? Well, um, the St. Bernard has got to be in there, surely. Well, 18 months. I, um, Robin, just looking at the expression for alertness. That Doberman does look really good. Beautiful, beautiful square outline. outline, beautiful top line, and high tail set. And the Newfoundland as well. Very striking dog. It's a strong shortlist, isn't it, Frank? It is indeed, but. Uh, what a, what a prospect for the future that young St. Bernard is. So, could she start her career today? We'll wait and see. Robin, looking back, this is where you have to think. Get the right order. Get your four in the right order so you can be decisive. We'll know when he's ready because he'll call for the boards. Looks like they're ready to go. So... Well, where's he heading? Where's he heading? Where's he heading? Oh, come on. Ah, the Siberian, the Siberian Husky. The Siberian Husky wins the group. Well, marvellous. Jeff Horswell sending forward this group winner today. Akila. The Siberian Husky. Five and a half year old dog from Nottingham. And in second place, the Alaskan, the Alaskan Malamute. Malamute. So this is Black, a five year old dog from Italy. And third place is going to the boxer, the four year old dog from Oxford. That's Kevin. And marvellous in fourth place, the Mastiff gets fourth place. What a, a great lineup and a wonderful win for the, the Mastiff here, taking in this strong group. But um, I wonder if we've had a Siberian Husky to win the group before, but I'll have to do a bit of research on that one. I don't yes. think we have, but yeah. I'll let you check. So this is our winner, five and a half year old dog, Akila from Nottinghamshire. I have no words, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I, can't, I can't believe it's happening. When, just, I'm lost. when you woke up this morning, and you, I can see that you're shaking, okay, because this happens to us all, but this is a group winning dog now. You've had some plenty of success. Tell us a little bit about this dog's wins in the past, Jess. Um, so he, he was made a champion at Windsor, and at Windsor we also went best in show, went all the way to best in show. Um, but he's just blown my mind away, yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd have a winning show dog, so... And just, tell us a little bit about him. Who owns him? Who breeds him? Um, I own him. Kelly Hughes bred him. Uh, Sabe Drift Kennel. So he lives at me at Zimmerbock Kennel, but Kelly Hughes bred him, so... Well, congratulations <laughs> to the whole team. And so you're going to now have to come back on Sunday night for Best in Show. Yes. Did you have any plans this weekend? It was, I was working. I'm not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the winner of the working group here at Crafts. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me enormous pleasure. So there we have the first winner the coming back on Sunday, the Siberian Husky. Marvellous win. Well, 
Great group. Robin did a very good job and had a very good lineup. Eight top quality dogs, but it's the Siberian Husky we'll see on Sunday night. Now, if, if you're a dog fan, I always say everyone should come to Crufts once as a pilgrimage. Come along on Sunday, there's still some tickets left for Best in Show. One of the great spectacles of the dog world to watch Best in Show in this great arena. Come along to the NEC and see the top seven competing for Best in Show. So there we have Akela, the dog, five and a half years old. A beautiful expression, <laughs> very alert, unfazed by winning this, this uh, competition. Sign These are dogs that can go all day, aren't they? They really are. <laughs> so owner Jessica Allen there says she's shaking, but let's hope she can manage a run round, a lap of honour. Yes. And the Italian Alaskan Malamute in second place. Then we've got our boxer, Kevin, and Bertie, our Mastiff. It's good to be back, isn't it, Frank? And lovely to see these top quality dogs. Marvellous. Magnificent 